Have you ever made a mistake that you could have avoided? Afterwards, you beat yourself up because you feel like an idiot? I've been feeling like crap this week because I thought I had destroyed my favorite guitar. A month ago on eBay, I spotted a US-made fender specced one-piece alder body that only weighed four pounds and one ounce and was nitro shell pink. Pink is not really my thing when it comes to colors on a guitar. I've built a few pink guitars, but I've sold them all. I paid $250 for it and it arrived at my shop a week later. In person, it was a very nice looking guitar body. I decided to pair it with a Maple Fender American Performer Telecaster neck. I built a modern style Telecaster wiring harness using CTS pots and an Oak Grigsby pickup selector switch. Also installed a set of Fender Ventura 50s pickups. My intent was to finish the guitar up and sell it on reverb. I did a setup on the guitar and I started playing it. Something about this guitar just got to me. It checked all the boxes for how I look for kind of the perfect guitar. I become very sensitive to the weight of a guitar lately. Not that I cannot hold a heavy guitar, but if you have a choice, why would you? I now go to ridiculous lengths looking for guitars that are less than eight pounds or not much over. When I'm buying online, I always ask for the weight. I'm surprised when sellers don't list it just automatically. As an example, the Square Classic Vibe 50s Telecasters of late are really moving up on the scale and weight. If you look at Sweetwater, they show you the specific guitars available and they also display the weight, which I think is an incredible feature. The issue though is the CV50 Tele they display sometimes are over 9 pounds, which is just ridiculous to me. This is nothing to do with Sweetwater. This is Squire selling boat anchors of late, which is really unfortunate. I shopped for over a month for a new loaded Classic Vibe 50s blonde body that was less than five pounds. I was elated when I found one and then put my own neck on it. It's now a unicorn among current release versions of this guitar with it being less than an eight pound guitar, which is really kind of unheard of when compared to the other new ones. Back to Pinky. Oh yeah, I named her Pinky. Pinky weighs 7 pounds and 7 ounces. She has a maple fretboard. Normally, I gravitate to a rosewood or rosewood-like fretboard. I think that they sound better. Pinky sounds incredible to me, both plugged in and unplugged. The neck to play, it just feels perfect. I put just the standard Fender modern tuners on this guitar and, you know, nothing special. I also added Wilkinson compensated saddles and a bone nut. This guitar holds tuning like I've never seen a guitar do. It just amazes me. She is very resonant and acoustic, like when plugged in or unplugged. Once I name a guitar, it's not probably going to be sold. I started to play Pinky more than anything else in my collection and I moved her to the most prized storage place in my collection of hanging her in my living room to the left of my TV. My wife is pretty cool and lets me have one guitar hanger in the living room. This is where I hang my favorite at the time. You know you have a special guitar when you're a shitty guitar player and the guitar actually makes you sound like you're not. Pinky the guitar is that. She had one issue though. I did not like the neck pickup. It was dull and had no top end at all. I ordered a set of Fender Pure Vintage 64 Telecaster pickups. These are actually kind of my current favorite pickups. The other morning I had meetings all day and wanted to change out the pickups quickly so I could play with her in the evening and see what she'd sound like with the new pickups installed. It was a mistake. I was not really awake yet, hadn't even had coffee. When I opened her up and pulled the old pickups out and tried to slide the vintage cloth covered wires through the holes to the control panel, I realized the hole from the bridge pickup route to the control panel route would not accommodate four wires. I grabbed the correct drill bit and decided to just follow the current hole pathway and I'd just make it larger. Not a lot, just some. I got the angle wrong and was not paying enough attention to catch it. I also did not mark off the cutoff depth on the drill bit so I would not over drill. I literally drilled through the bottom of the guitar. When I realized what I had done, I just froze. How could I have done something so stupid, so junior? I had drilled a hole like this a million times and I had never messed up. I swear to God, I almost cried. 
I pulled everything off of the pink body and placed the components into a box and put it on a shelf in the back of my shop. I set Pinky off to the side. I really needed to think. I started looking online for a replacement body, something that was just the right weight and, you know, similar finish. I had not really thought about repairing the body yet. I finally decided to see what I could do to the body. Fill the hole and make it go away like it had never been there was the first order of the day. I did this by inserting a dowel rod that was an exact fit to the hole with wood glue. To fix the finish, I had two pathways. To match the paint and repair the finish at my skill level of refinishing just seemed almost like almost impossible task. I'm just not that really good at painting with nitro. She would never be the same again if I went this way. When I looked closely, she also now, I discovered, had a pretty good sized chip in another location. I don't know how it happened. I decided I'd take another path of lightly relicking the guitar so the blemishes would blend into the overall look. I did some light wear chipping here and there where it would normally show up and wear over the years. I used a can of compressed air to help create checking in the finish. I did this by heating the body up and then taking the body outside. When a gas is compressed into a container, the molecules gain potential energy. When the gas is released, when you basically let the air out of the can back to the atmospheric pressure, this energy is released as heat, which greatly lowers the temperature of the air being sprayed out of the can. I know this doesn't make sense, but it's science. I sprayed the freezing spray all over the heated surface of the guitar body. I read it helps to turn the can upside down while spraying. It really does. Soon, the surface of the body was covered with frost, the front, the back, and the sides. As it dried, I could see light checking in the finish starting to form all over. Nothing drastic, just kind of unnatural, natural, sudden aging. I assembled Pinky. I had never even got to hear what she would sound like with her new pickups until now. I was worried I'd really F things up and she would never feel and play as before. Luckily I was wrong. She is still pinky, exactly as before, just with a few more dents and dings here and there, and is just as comfortable to play.